Okay, Gautam, welcome. Okay, it looks like he's connecting to audio, so good. Thank you so much. Okay. So, Gautam, where are you based? Uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, super. I should have should have guessed the Coke bottles. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I did a uh, project for Coca Cola, and the uh, the client kind of personalized these bottles for me and my you know family. So. Oh, very good. I was gonna say if the product if all they gave you was a case of Coke, then I don't know. But okay, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta eat uh, in survive on sugar and uh, and carbon dioxide and. And uh, I mean, I've I've not done one of these before, but you know, I've got I've got slides in the background. But uh, the, the more interactive we keep it, I think uh, uh, the more valuable it will be. Uh, so the host, um, the, uh, I, I've got a couple of slides to share. Uh, how would I share them? Uh, at the bottom of your screen, it should sh if you open up the uh, presentation and then hit share screen, yeah. and select the presentation. It says the host is uh, host disabled participant screen share. Okay, Michelle, I think you're the host. Oh yeah, sorry about that. I usually do that right off the bat and did not. Okay, I'm clicking it now, and you should have the con. Thank you, and uh, I like your view. I'd rather be there. Than <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, can you all see my screen? Yep. Awesome. Ah, oh, beautiful. Let me know when we can get started. Okay. And uh, so, Gautam, we probably will wait uh, sure. a few minutes, uh, you know, and then get going, okay? Not a problem. Okay. So, I'll just start with a quick intro. Um, so I'm Gautam Baliapa, you know, uh, well, I'm new to Deloitte. I've worked, you know, close to 25 years in around the telco industry from various angles at the carriers, at the NEP network equipment providers, right, at the customers of the telcos, uh, primarily on data and AI for, you know, most of those uh, 25 years. Um, and, you know, happy, happy to be here to speak with you all. Uh, the more interactive we make this conversation, you know, the more value you'll get. This is my first time presenting. I've created some slides as background, but you know I'd love to you know uh, get get involved in the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, questions before I get started? Yeah. So uh, I mean, j just looking at this one slide, okay. You know, we we've gone through sort of couple of decades, I would say, uh, of stuff built around uh, the consumer where there's been a lot yep. of growth in the network. Yep. And you know, just just sort of curious on your take when I look at a, a you know set of trend issues like that, uh, it seems that a lot of the investment is in fact sort of shifting to be more in industry, okay? Yep. Uh, and connection with things as opposed to connection with people. Uh, and so that drives, I would say, a sort of new needs for AI operations, things of that sort, uh, that goes along with that trend. Okay. So I didn't I, see it explicitly, but I'm just curious whether you're seeing things going in that direction. Yeah, so I've got several slides that address that topic. So I started off with general trends of AI, then I okay. go into trends, you know, specifically on the network, right? And then I go into some of the considerations that are important. Uh, but uh, so while I don't have a simple answer for you, I will tell you that, you know, from a consumer perspective, most of the telcos have extracted, you know, the revenue that they can. We're, I think, north of, you know, one connection per consumer uh, from that perspective. Uh, and uh, so is, you know, most of the, the world out there. Uh, and yeah. then the future growth is around machine to machine interactions for sure, right? Yeah. But the question that's on the table is who is going to benefit from that interaction? Uh, what, one of the uh, the thoughts that I posted on a blog post, post earlier is telcos that have enabled world-changing technologies 
like the internet, like social media, like search, like, you know, and you can go on and on and on, you know, connected world, right? Have not seen the benefits. We don't have a trillion dollar telco, right? We've got trillion dollar internet companies who need the telco to survive. It's the oxygen, right? Uh, yeah. So the R&D money is going into, you know, the spaces where there's significant amount of revenue growth, right? The telcos are seeing their balance sheet shrink, their, their, their multiples on stock price shrink, right? Sure. Um, so the future growth is going to come from machine to machine interaction, but how far upstream they can go, it's, it's a question that you know has a regulatory impact. It also has a societal impact, right? Sure. Uh, they're getting squeezed NEPs on the bottom. So they're getting squeezed OTT, right? Over the top yeah. providers, you know? Okay. So so let me maybe maybe yeah. do ask one more question. I think you have you know one box that deals with this. Yeah. Okay. So in looking at AI and its wide yeah. use both in telcos yeah. and uh i'd say in other verticals yeah. okay, it takes infrastructure to support that right okay? and that Correct. infrastructure is connectivity right uh, computing which you show some of okay yeah yeah uh it's uh, uh data storage because everything yeah. lives off data Okay. Yeah. And then I would say, uh, you know, speculatively, uh, mm -hmm. besides data storage, there has to be sort of an infrastructure for data sharing. Okay. Yeah. Which is very a very different kind of infrastructure. Here, you can okay. see this trend here. Yeah, sharing. Okay. So, so you're calling it okay. So it's sometimes dealing with, with supply chains. Okay. Uh, information yeah. collaboratively in, in supply chain. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I was just trying to figure yeah. out what boxes to look in for this. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the other is data security and delegated authority. Oh, de uh, which is yeah. Right? Because you can Access have an control essentially in some ways. I mean it's uh, who who gets yeah. to see what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and okay. also now tie that into information supply chain in the physical supply chain, right? We know what's going on, right? For, to, to a large extent, right? Yeah. You have export control, you have, you know, uh, you have, you know, um, uh, customs, right? You have other checkpoints, you have, you know, commerce regulations, you have all of that, right? As the world shifts to information being the oxygen, right? What is the role of the regulator? What's the role of the network and understanding what's going through it? Is it malicious? Is it compliant with the laws? Is it secure? Yeah. Right? So both of those elements are tightly connected. And now you go with the explosion of data, you go with machine to machine interactions, right? right? Um, you know, how do you manage, you know, that, that the, so, the change that. Yeah. So to, Two more things. I'm again. I'm ju just curious where, where, where they fall sure. in. And, hey, uh, Adam. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Adam, hey, why don't we go ahead and let him start, sure. and then maybe the the yeah. questions no, no, that you let, already let, have maybe ahead. could I, happen at the end. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yep. No. I mean, either way, I'm very happy to answer questions, but but I can go through you know these slides fairly quickly and get yeah, more into the network yeah. later. Let, yeah. let's let's hear so, let's hear what you have prepared and then yeah, i'm yeah, sure yeah. that we're yeah. going to have a lot of questions for you yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know and uh, i'll try to be brief in my talk over the slides you guys can you know once i send it review the slides to leisure you can yeah. also you know quick read so very quickly customer centricity has become you know if, if you look at how ai is emerging in the marketplace the, they're three layers the way we look at it. One is customer centricity, which is how is the monetization of AI changing and where is its use? What's changing from an architectural perspective? What are some of the future trends to be aware of? Some of these trends are not future, they're right now, right? From a customer centricity perspective, purpose is everything, which is, you know, uh, AI is not cheap, AI is expensive, right? So understanding, you know, uh, how to run it cost effectively, understanding purpose before deploying it is important, which is linked to ESD and shareholder uh, 
value, which is profit alone is not important. Purpose is important, but you know, how do you enable, how do you create the context bridge between running AI and creating shareholder value? Because that's what allows all the companies, including the network companies to thrive. Operations is a primary customer saying, in the, in the legacy days, data and AI were in the back room reporting the news tomorrow, what happened yesterday. But more and more important, AI is being operationalized inside processes, inside systems, in operations, because uh, the way things are done manually doesn't scale, even before the labor shortages that we have today. Mm -hmm. Collaborative in information supply chains, chains going to the machine-to-machine -machine interaction that we just spoke about, is that today, you know, uh, companies interact with each other through data. Right? And you'll see later on in the deck, right, we're saying that campus networks are becoming important because network connectivity is not just a connectivity between premises, but even in my house, right? I've got a federated network right inside my house, right? Because I've got to power a bunch of devices. Every corporation has to be connected, right? There's private 5G, you know, uh, private LTE, 6G connectivity within factories, within buildings and so on in addition to the connectivity that you need outside, and companies need to collaborate inside with data and with each other through data, right? So, so what is the network of the future going to look like in that kind of an environment? Ephemeral everything goes into the compute question, which is saying, right, uh, with the democratization of data and the proliferation of AI, right, uh, the shared nothing architectures are no longer working. In order for me to achieve an outcome, Right, and you all saw the Coca-Cola example here, right? When Coca-Cola wants to influence a customer to buy Coke, they need to interact with somebody like NB2 that plays the ad, right? Uh, which means all the data is not in one place in order to exercise the AI. So compute needs to be ephemeral, which means it stands up when needed, it goes away when it's not needed. It's not like in the old days where compute only exists in the data center. Okay? Automation is with scale, manual is not, not, not enough. AI and everything, AI and everywhere, is a need for personalization, customization, you know, regulatory precision means that AI is baked into, is beginning to bake, be baked into every business process throughout the ecosystem. Federated analytics and business enablement, again, goes back to my prior point on ephemeral everything, is that you're no longer able to say, this is, a, this is my AI system for the company because AI is everywhere, right? AI is into, the single store approach, the single AI platform approach is gone. Now AI is everywhere. How do you govern, manage this, right? The future is, you know, uh, as information supply chain becomes prevalent, right? The data brokers who sold data the old way, which is sell data, are, you know, becoming redundant. Now every company is a data company. They're, they're, they're providing the data to be monetized by somebody else in their business process. And this is leading to companies needing to quantify data on their balance sheet. We believe quantum computing will change the game, but who knows, quantum computing and quantum you know, communications will change the game, but who knows when. It's been around the corner five years from now for 25 years, so we'll see. Data security and delegated authority is coming to, we spoke about machine to machine. Many machines run AI, but you know, an AI has no rights, it has no liability, right? So it is very important for companies to figure out who is that AI or that system acting as a proxy of, so the rights, the liabilities, and so on, right, are, are delegated from that person, right, that is responsible for the actions of that AI. That's mm -hmm. this slide. Happy to answer any questions before I go into the slightly more network appropriate version of this slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I, All right. Yep. Good. So, I mean, I'll finish this trend and then I can pause for questions, right? Uh, so commercial and financial of how it plays in the networks is, you know, the, the, the global um, uh, market will invest 38 billion per year in AI by 2025, uh, right? Uh, which is a uh, CADR, compounded annual growth rate of 60%. It's unprecedented, right? So significant amount of spend is gonna happen in AI. Uh, so it's very important that companies understand where AI plays, how it plays. And this is just in the telco industry, right? Uh, top line and bottom line challenges, right? AI can address 
operational issues as they are at many telcos, right? Uh, they, like optimizing energy consumption and so on, but they also help with, you know, uh, top, line, uh, top line benefits. Uh, one of the main, and coming back to network and the use of AI, right? Uh, how do you ensure equity and sustainability through the use of AI? This is, you know, one of the main, one of the main use cases that we see for AI, apart from the operational excellence uh, that we see within, you know, communication ecosystem as a whole across, you know, both the uh, providers as well as, you know, uh, the, the communication companies, right? Uh, profitability and growth. So the growth of our society is happening through technology, through AI, which is powered by the networks, right? Uh, but the cost of providing service keeps going up. The cost, of, you know, the co uh, sorry, the cost of providing service is going up. Like LTE is very expensive, but you know the money they're getting from the consumers is not going up at the same rate at the cost that it costs to provide infrastructure, right? The cost of equipment going up, the cost of deploying the service is going up, but the revenue is not keeping up with it because it's my belief that most of the value from this ecosystem infrastructure that's being set up, set up is for the companies that ride on top of the network, right? So is it creating some kind of compromise is, is in the future, right? Is it, is, it, is it putting, you know, our critical infrastructure at risk because, you know, the value from providing the critical service is not being re realized by the providers providing that service. So, right? so Gautam, and, yeah, so yeah, a, a question on, on this issue, okay? So if I, if I were to look at, let's say, the operators, yeah. they are fairly capital intensive. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. in the end, I mean, I, I, I think this is a point you're making, their yeah. ability to raise money to sustain mm -hmm. the investment is what's at risk. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Not just that, right? So that is for the future. But now, you know, add in the complexity that uh, the, the, threat, the threat actors in the cybersecurity space, right, yeah. uh, are, are not like, you know, this layman hacker, right? It's countries with, you know, billions yeah, that of dollars. national of means, yeah, okay. Right? With yeah. billions of dollars budget trying to compromise the network, right? So if they cannot raise capital to, you know, keep the networks evol evolving, number one, and two, secure, right? It puts yeah. everything, all the other yeah. industries that ride on top of it, right, at risk. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, yeah. Right? SDN NFB is, yeah. you know. So, Paul... Well, l let me just ask you, because, you know, in, in some sense, would you put that in the safety basket of something we should cover? How would you see that framed as safety? Maybe. I just want to make sure I understand how you're thinking. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I, I think what, what Gautam is pointing out is that that's a major risk, okay, uh, at a very systemic level, essentially. Yeah, but is that a risk independent of AI? You know, I think AI exacerbates it. Okay, all right, all right. We can talk a little bit more about it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. If I may just, you know, uh, responding to that specific one, Paul. So, so first question in the safety uh, question is, right, who pays for cybersecurity? Who's responsible for cybersecurity? Yeah. There's no clear answer to that, correct? Yeah, well, it's, I think we all know, right? It's uh. It's just enough to get by. Yeah, right. For now, right. Uh, but the actors are getting sophisticated because of AI. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we don't have a, if I want to say, uh, uh, you know, and, and and the reason the actors are acting is not to compromise an individual company, right, or you know, an individual premise or an individual network. There, many of the actors are doing a compromise, you know, a, a country, right. It, it, right? So, you know, through AI, right? So what's the means to, you know, understand it, to respond to it, you know? So that's something that I think that needs to be, needs to be you know, thought through. Yeah, I, with that specific example, I completely agree that AI exacerbates the cyber threat, but it also provides tools to deal with it. And, you know, to your point about who pays for it, I mean, I guess we all do, right? It's a tax that the carriers have to impose and they have to make that trade off of you know, how much to invest right. there and stay profitable. 
Yeah, yeah, but but on that point, right? If, if you dig into it a little bit, who pays for it? We pay for the consequences of it, right? But if you look at the the supply chain of you know the the attack vector, so let's say they want to attack a hospital, right? You have a hospital system that's procured a bunch of applications from application companies that ride on top of the network, right? Um, the the thing is, there's no cogent cybersecurity approach across all of the layers, and everybody's assuming, you know, the hospital is assuming the software is secure, the software is assuming the network secure, right? Uh, and you know, there's, there's no standard to say this is how the country handles cybersecurity, and then who who coordinates across, you know, the threat vectors across entities, right? So I'm saying, I think it's an important question to answer from a communication perspective because it's all riding on top of the network, right? Which in a is, physical supply. Actually, which is increasingly right. riding on top of the compute fabric, right? So. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. In, in a physical supply chain, you know, goods are examined before they come into the country. In a data supply chain, who's examining what's coming in? You know? Yeah, clearly nobody. And what, one more critical thing to ask you, okay? When you talk about AI, I assume yeah. you're talking about a lot more than just machine learning. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's it's the whole you know the whole gamut from you know uh, from you know uh, neural networks to you know all, all every uh, Gra every yeah. kind of if you knowledge want. graphs. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that's so good. What, so what we're on that gap is good. I was going to say while we're on that, Gautam, I was going to ask this question in a bit, but let me ask it now. So you mentioned software-defined networking and network function virtualization. I don't really think of those, at least in my head, as AI. I mean, they I think, are. well, they may be, they may include AI, but SDN and NFV doesn't necessarily imply any AI in my mind. Yeah. We've had software-defined yeah. software -defined cores forever. Yeah. So let, let me go back, you know, one, one one generation, you know, the hardware devices being sold today come with AI built into them. In fact, I was talking to a client, you know, last week where they have, you know, chips from NVIDIA, right, built into the hardware to do threat detection, to do management of networks, right? So what I'm saying is in order for the, the software uh, defined network to function, AI is getting built into it. The thing that, you know, from a regulatory standpoint to understand is, you know who knows what's in there, right? You, right? Most of the most of the innovation in SDN NFV, I, I don't know how many of the, this is coming from American companies. They they may be coming from companies on the outside who may not have the best interests of the country at heart, who who may actually be a bad actor, right? When it's hardware, you knew it, you could control it, you could bring it to your lab, test it. When it's software, and you know with DevOps and Agile. You're getting patches every week. Do you know what's managing a network? Do you know where the telemetry is going to, right? Do you remember the congressman who had a smart thermostat that was continuously, continuously sending data to China? I don't know if any of you remember that, right? A couple of years ago, right? It's happening, right? Sure. So that's what I mean is, is AI, is, AI is used to managing a network. AI is increasing the complexity of the network to the point where, you know, Without regulation for understandability and explainability, it will be unexplainable. It could become unmanageable to where we lose control, right, of, of, of some of these components, if that, okay. if that makes sense. Okay, so maybe paraphrasing back just to make sure I've got it. In, in the SDN yeah. context, um, AI sort of becomes an imperative because it's got so many moving parts and so much complexity. You sort of have to use yeah. it, um, and that's where the yeah. AI fits in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Paul, I mean, in, in a in the least from my understanding, almost every SDN and NFV system has some form of a hypervisor attached to it. Okay? Yeah, almost by definition, yeah. Okay. That hypervisor almost invariably uses some form of AI today. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Network automation, you know, we kind of touched upon it on the prior slide of saying, Every company is becoming a network company, right? They need intelligent campus infrastructure. They need infrastructure inside of the company to manage how different parts of the companies, the, the humans in the company, as well as the machines in the companies, interact with other humans and other machines, right? In addition to, you know, uh, their interaction outside of the company, 
a lot of these interactions right now are being done through, you know, delegated authority through AI. Okay. AI has been baked into endpoints, right, to interact with other, AI. when you say machine interacting with other machines, more and more they're getting sophisticated to the point where they have built-in AI chips or built-in AI programs to interact with each other, right? So this is something to be aware of and, you know, and, and work through, right? This goes into the other thing, AI and everything, right? Uh, they're, they're linked together. And which is also linked to federated analytics to say, now you're developing uh, collaborative ecosystems where AI is not sitting in one spot, right? Uh, the, the actual net effect is across many different endpoints of AI that are working together in collaboration to achieve, you know, uh, an outcome internally and across companies. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And then back to the SDN, NFE, and network automation point, if you look at the use cases on the bottom, network and IT operations uh, management, right? Uh, will be 44% of telco AI expenditure, right? Which is tel the management of telcos are becoming much more complicated, right? And many times telcos are buying AI without understanding its function. It's not like a device in the past, right? We understand all of its functions, right? Um, and the other use cases in here, customer service marketing, cybersecurity, more and more of the cybersecurity, right? As well as the threat, right? Is AI or oriented. And obviously, back to the campus network point. Now every company is becoming a network company. I was at um, uh, Mobile World Congress uh, this year, and everybody's talking 5G, right? The cloud providers are talking 5G. The network providers are talking 5G. Actually, talking about implementing 5G, right? Uh, so you know, every company is becoming a network company because a network is, you know, the lifeblood of every company today. Is there any questions on these two slides? No, no. One very, one very quick one, Gavin. So that forty-four percent, that's largely in that complexity you were talking about. That largely comes because it's, the network's becoming software-defined and the whole architecture is changing. Well, but oh, that's more I, OSS systems, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm saying, hold on. So yeah, for the OSS system, but the entire spend of AI, forty percent uh, of all uh, of the telcos, forty-four percent is going to be on automating the OSS function. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions? No, no. The next slide is saying, you know, in many industries, and this I, I stole it from a uh, network equipment provider to say that, you know, um, that there is in, in self-driving, for example, they talk about the evolution of AI. They talk about level one, two, three, four, five. Right? Should we think about something like this for uh, networks as networks become more and more autonomous, right? Uh, as they go SDN, NFE, that you know you have the ability to automate many of the tasks and take the human out of the loop. Right? Uh, this is quite simple. You know, we don't need to debate what's in here now, but this is just saying, you know, if there's a if there's a system systemic industry standard framework, then there's a way to evaluate, you know, the, the, the changes happening in different parts of the network ecosystem. Yeah, and obviously okay. the further to the right you go, the risk and the safe use questions get more profound, right? Right, exactly, right? And that's why building in hooks, so there's, there's a velocity, there's a pressure to go right, right? To save on operational costs, because going back to the point about the difficulty in raising capital, right? Um, but if they do it in, in an unstructured manner or don't do it in a thoughtful manner, most of the automation being supplied, you know, in the space is coming from, you know, actors outside of the specific country in which this is being deployed, right? Um, and one needs to understand the trade-offs of just doing automation for automation's sake and not being able to control it, right? And also, as we saw in the solar wind pack, if anybody's aware, right? A backdoor was deployed inside, you know, automation software into a bunch of clients, right? Yep. Jonathan, is there a paper or something more formal behind this? Or is it, you said you lifted it from somebody yep. else? There is? Yeah, uh, there is a paper behind it. You know, I'm, I'm happy to share it. I lifted it from somebody's paper, so I'm happy to share that paper. <laughs> that would awesome. be great. Okay. Thank you. 
from an NEP, you know, net, network equipment providers, you know, paper. Um, but I, I obviously didn't want to quote them because, you know, you know, motive. I don't understand their motive. <laughs> but um, that's the thing about AI. It, it, the, the summary of what I said in the prior slide is it can easily provide a backdoor, right? If you're not, if if you don't make it explainable. Yeah. So going on to the next slide, you know, in deploying AI, we want AI to be resilient, right? To to understand abnormalities as a human way, to operate it, right? And you know, be free from manipulation, coercion, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, in in a social media or a network driven society, right? We want to make sure it's built in forensics, so you're able to understand what's going on in AI, so we can keep it secure, right? And be a trustworthy custodian. Is a lot of AI being deployed in the network today? Who is the custodian of that? It's very going back to the question on who owns cybersecurity, right? It, it's not easy to answer the question on who is the custodian of that AI, on whose behalf, or who, on who, or, or for whose best interest is that AI working on? So Gautam, you know, we have cybersecurity sort of traditionally associated with the IT space. I'm yep. seeing a considerable amount of, of activity on what's now called AI sec. Okay. Yeah. And there is something yep. different about the use of AI and what security yep. means in that context. Yep. Yep. So and, and again, I would say that sort of on, on a learning curve to some extent at this point. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And it's happening organically, right? Yeah. But is, is is there a need for something to happen systemically, right? Because the question of who is the custodian of that AI on whose best interest is it acting, right, has not been, you know, it's not, it has well, not been clarified, not been regulated, right? Yeah, because, okay, so this hits something that you talked about earlier, because yeah. part of how that AI acts does depend yeah. on the data that it is fed, and therefore yeah. all of a sudden you have a tangle across. Yeah. A whole bunch of considerations, essentially. Correct. Correct. Um, and this goes to the last point: delegated authority is saying today there is no concept of delegated authority within the company. When there's an issue, they react to it. Everybody converges to handle it, yeah. right? But who owns each AI within the company, right? If it's a security AI, is, is, should it be owned by the CISO or should it be owned by IT who's running that AI? Yeah. Right. If it's an optimization uh, AI, for example, network traffic optimization, or uh, you're trying to, for example, you know, determine who gets the highest speed, right? Um, who is looking at it from the perspective of equity mm -hmm. right? well, or bias? Yeah, so, so let me ask the following. You know, when you look at various industries, mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, uh, AI, let's say, you know, you talked about uh, autonomous cars, things of that sort, let's say, as a use case. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's autonomous, there is still an incredible amount of network traffic that supports that. Okay. Yep. And yep. there's also sort of this legal hole because yep. IT companies do not take on the kind of liabilities that you finally that you actually find in the uh, automotive industry. And that, again, is sort of an overall, I would say, risk or safety factor in some sense. Correct. Right. They, they have gotten around the problem by, you know, putting a, whatever, 15-second rule for holding the steering wheel. And yeah. they're saying that the AI is acting on behalf of the driver. The driver is still there and able to override control. Right? But the true fact is, you know, when you're trusting an AI to drive, you're not actually paying attention. That's absolutely right. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. So they've solved liability by saying, hey, unless it's a class action, I'm not responsible, the driver was distracted, but they've actually deployed something that distracts the driver. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah. And, and this is happening in every industry. What do you see on your newsfeed? Who controls that? 
Do you know that? Yep. Right? Does a company that's giving you the news feed know that even? Right? How much of that is paid for? Who who's paying for the content to show up on a news feed? So I'm just saying across industries, right? The uh, priority of traffic across the network, right, is for sale in some way, shape, or form because you know there's not a transparency, right, in how the network operates at a deep level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. Like what what you know shows up on somebody's Facebook feed or TikTok feed, right? Is it an ad? Is it paid for content by somebody else? Who's manipulating the algorithm, right? And, and that happens in every industry, right? Um, and, and the network is becoming very critical uh, to everything that we do, like you said, right? Within the car, right? It is autonomous because of the network. Mm -hmm. Without the network, we wouldn't have AI, we wouldn't have autonomy, right? Okay. Any other questions? No, no, good. Um, and, uh, you know, on the concept of trustworthy AI, Deloitte has a framework for trustworthy AI, right? Uh, and we're deploying it in other industries when we have not as much in telco. We do it in healthcare to make sure, you know, health, you know, uh, to ensure health equity, to make sure it's transparent and uh, explainable, right? And make sure there's responsibility and accountability for every AI program, make sure it's secure, it's privacy compliant, and it's reliable, right? Uh, happy to share this with you, but we think, you know, some kind of trustworthy AI needs to be part of the regulatory framework as we evolve up from, you know, from network having regulations that are more, you know, hardware oriented. In the so, Gautam, so when you look at this, you find that the EU uh, mm -hmm. is sort of staring down, I think, near term on passing some legislation in this area. And yeah. uh, I think we heard from NIST uh, on building a, yeah. um, a risk-based framework mm -hmm. for dealing with these issues. Uh, yeah. So in, in your travel through all of this, is there a framework that somebody has formalized at this point uh, that makes sense to look at seriously? So I'll take that as, as an action, but I'm very happy to share Deloitte, you know, my company's trustworthy AI framework uh, that looks at, but I, I will take your question of who is, I, I don't think anybody's actually implemented a framework, right? That addresses the core issue, which is on whose behalf, right? Is that, is that AI working? Well, right? so, so uh, let me, let me ask it this yeah. way. You know, if, if I look at, let's say what we went through again, last 20, 30 years, uh, yeah. there are a few frameworks built around, uh, let's say software, software quality, all of that. Yeah. And that was, let's say CMMI or something like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if you look at cybersecurity, there was the, NIST framework, yep. uh, there's yep. one you know, out of uh, MITRE that's used across DOD, uh, so yep. several frameworks like that. Okay, so in, in your opinion, do you think AI needs a similar framework or can yeah. it be incorporated into one of the existing frameworks? It, it cannot be because AI is all, I don't want to say all, it will be pervasive across all of the other frameworks. If you think of CMMI, if you think of NIST, they're all horizontal that address very deeply a slice of where AI applies, right? But AI is a network that goes across many functions, right? It could compromise anyone or all of those functions if it doesn't have its own, you know, trustworthy framework, if you would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? As everything becomes software, Right? What is the framework to look at? You know the the impartiality, the transparency, the responsibility, the security, right? Of AI. Okay. So so again, let me ask it this way. You know, in one way, you can think of AI eventually as sort of being a form of software. Okay. Yeah. You can also think of it as saying, okay, it is software, the underlying hardware, the connectivity. Uh, the data, yep. the story, you know, five or six, some countable, no, 
you know, small number of things. Okay. Yep. Is that what distinguishes it from purely software? So abstract it away from software and think of it from the perspective of a machine that's not explainable, right? That's controlling your life. It well, doesn't matter. If it's I can do that with software without saying anything about AI, right? Exactly. 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 That's what I'm saying. So, uh, but, but, you know, the explainability of that does not exist today. And this is saying making that transparent and explainable is important to society because soft and more and more software is AI driven today. And when it's implemented, it's complemented by AI. So you're right, right? So the higher level uh, question is, you know, does software need to be explainable whether it's AI or not, right? If it's not AI, generally it's easier to explain, right? Because it's deterministic. You can test it. You know what its inputs and outputs are, right? AI is not, it's just complementing well, I mean, or compounding. I mean, well, you, you can write software where the answers are not deterministic. They're still, you know, soft programming, it's data driven. Either way, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I agree with you. We say AI because it, it, you know, exponentially increases the complexity of the problem, but you're right, right? It's to make software itself explainable and trustworthy because it's running more and more parts of our lives, right? If that, if that was your question. Okay. Hey, Galvin, on this slide, if I could, um, Adam mentioned the EU, and you're obviously familiar with what's going on there. What does regulatory compliance in the context of telecommunications mean? What do you think that means? So today, you know, it's, it's complying with all that. Uh, so uh, let me back up one second. So this framework, like I said, is being deployed in other industries, right? Like healthcare, uh, banking, and so on and so forth. Uh, I, right. I've not seen this being deployed in telco, to be clear, right? Uh, but telco has a regulatory framework, has compliance frameworks, right, in every country, right? Mm -hmm. And this is saying, how do you bake in to, to Adam's earlier point about software, right, elements into it, how do you bake AI elements into it to ensure, you know, you're complying with, with those laws? Yeah. Okay. So you don't really think that white, that white bubble you've got there hasn't really been thought through in telecom. I mean, I know it's been thought through in healthcare to some degree in finance, et cetera, right. but it's kind of virgin yeah. territory. Okay. All right. Good enough. Thank exactly. you. Yeah. And what I telco is, what, what is telco, right? Uh, when you do regulatory framework, because Today, the carriers are regulated, but then, you know, to a certain extent, there's some thought about the NEPs coming from outside, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But the telcos are run by the NEPs, right? And how do you understand the threat vectors and the compliance, you know, around how the ecosystem functions as a whole? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then, you know, some, some uh, trends in, you know, communications, we spoke about this already. Zero trust cognitive networks is, you know, uh, future networks being managed that are self-healing, but are managed mostly by AI. Many NEPs, network equipment providers, are coming out with, you know, some advancements in the form of, you know, autonomously managing networks. This goes into regulation and transparency to understand. Let's make sure, right? It's it's <laughs> all of this AI and innovation is being done for the best of the carrier, for the best of the country in which the carrier is operating. Distributed intelligence is more and more AI is working global scale. Each node is just one point in which it's learning, right? And the learnings and the actions are being deployed across a whole set of nodes, right? Trustworthy AI goes back to the framework we spoke about. Machine to machine and human machine collaboration, right? Are becoming more important as more and more machines are becoming AI driven, assisting humans, interacting with humans in, in a complex decision-making. Mm -hmm. Right, so I didn't have, you know, a whole lot more slides. At the end of the day, just to conclude, as they're saying, the network industry, right, CSP, you know, uh, NEP, uh, you know, and ignore the acronyms, but the cloud, the cloud uh, providers, the telecommunication providers, the network equipment providers are all going through a big change, right? And I feel like, you know, uh, the cloud providers went from infrastructure being commodity to infrastructure that's being valuable, that's letting them invest in, you know, all the things that we need, like AI, cyber, and so on and so forth, right? 
So what's the change that we need in the telco industry is for us to have telecommunication and network security that allows them to invest like the cloud service providers do, right? So this is just one thought. And the thought is important because back to you, your point, right? The industries are going through a systems architecture evolution and AI is becoming foundational to their evolution, right? So how do we think about the next gen telco and the next gen network, you know, as we go through this? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So that's all I have from a slides perspective. Happy to dig into any questions y'all may have. Oh, very good. Thank you so much. Um, I have a quick question about um, a theme I think I'm picking up on, and that is um, automation and how much of this mm -hmm. is is really a concern about um, about automation and and the fact that. Uh, that automation is so, such a big part of what we are talking about. And I, was, I was wondering if maybe you could say a little bit more about that. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, especially with network providers, you know, the uh, with the complexity of the network going up. For example, I'll, I'll give you. We're talking about a 5G deployment within a factory, you know, to automate the operations of that factory. Uh, and a telco is struggling to provide that service because. A telco does not know how to manage a small footprint, right? The level of automation is low in generally what a telco does. So its ability to provide, you know, to go in and, and plumb in, you know, let's say 100,000 factories in the U.S., right, with campus networks, with, you know, private 5G is being challenged because the telcos don't know how to manage something small. So there are providers coming in who have a high degree of automation who are winning in that space who are able to scale right, by creating, you know, autonomous networks within each campus, right? Um, so when this happens, right, they're not regulated like a telco, right? So what happens to, you know, uh, the, the management, right, uh, and the infrastructure that ha that's in the campus that, that has no regulatory oversight? Right? Let's ignore 5G, it could be just, you know, Wi-Fi 6 or something like that, right? Um, and, and similarly, on the on, on the communication side, uh, uh, TSP side, I'm TSP here, the telco service provider side, the ability to raise capital is going down because their shareholders are not seeing, you know, increase in revenue and you know, uh, and growth, right? So they're relying more and more automation, right? Which is again being provided by you know NEPs and other companies who may not have the best interest of the TSP at heart. So what's the regulatory framework? or software-defined X, where AI is a big part of the software, right? That'll help, you know? So, Sorry, yes. so, so Gautam, I'm a little perplexed by the following way, okay? Yeah. You know, in, in the past, in fact, and we, yeah. we seem to sort of ping pong between these kind of things, yeah. uh, a lot of the advances uh, yeah. in telecom, in fact, happened, I would say, in corporate spaces, yeah. uh, provided Centexes, PBXs, things of that sort, okay? Yeah. Where there was a limited footprint to serve an yeah. organization internally, okay? Yeah. And yeah. telcos were actually pretty good at that, okay? Yeah. And then yeah. we went through an explosion, I would say, on the consumer side, okay? Yeah. And a lot of uh, what used to be uh, corporate services of, of, you know, a, a whole bunch of corporate services uh, really fell to others in some sense, to other intermediaries. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so when I take a look at, uh, uh, you know, where the growth is, the CAGR in terms of use, as you said, it's machine yeah. to machine. Uh, it tends to be uh, in a commercial setting of one sort or another. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, if the telcos do not go after that, uh, they will miss a wave of, in I, I would say, a wave of innovation. Okay. Right. Uh, and so the issue really becomes, you know, can a few well thought through architectures actually serve a large range of applications? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. why aren't they jumping all over that? 
Good, good question. So, you know, I, I don't want to go back to a Saturn V analogy. I don't know that we can make a Saturn V today, right? What I mean by that is, you know, because we've well, lost we, that. We part. just did, I would say. Okay. That's the United States. But, but in a new way. Yeah. yeah. But in a new way, right? Yeah. So, but by somebody else, right? Um, so, coming back to that, so you, you brought up the PBX example, right? Uh, in, in, in a way, I feel like maybe the telcos forgot that and they need to build back that memory, if I may. Right? Yeah. And, and providing that framework, right, to, uh, that, that you mentioned, right, could help supercharge, supercharge that. If not, you know, it's going to be yeah. quite a fragmented ecosystem. Yeah, no, because can. look, I mean, in, in a sense, uh, and Paul, I, I don't know how aware you are of this. If, if I look at the standards, let's say, within TIA, uh, one yeah. of the big money makers was Bixie. I mean, was the wiring standard inside buildings? Yeah, that was owned by the telco industry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hundred percent. So what's okay. the wiring standard? Right? Okay. Inside so, the campus network. Okay. So so the the next so I have sort of a series series along this this line. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so the other thing in all of this is, uh, you know, when you looked at so softwareization in general, okay, mm -hmm. and the underlying computing infrastructure, okay, mm -hmm. there is one pattern that I see that is a drastic change from the past, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is, if I had a node, I would talk to that mm -hmm. node and that was the heart of my connectivity, okay? Yep. Now, when I have a node, I have to have multiple data streams, okay? Yeah. That may be connected mm -hmm. and anchored in different places, okay? So is there a pattern that AI and the computing world is creating, which is going to force a re real fundamental re-architecture of the communications infrastructure. So, in my mind, the communications infrastructure is dramatically changing, right? But it comes back to I don't think there's an established pattern because you have this three way battle where the telcos are kind of the, in this case, you know, the, the least able to make a move in that space. You have the NEPs on one side, you have the cloud providers on the other side, and you have telcos in the middle. And the telcos today are not taking leadership. Well, so, so let me even look at the consumer space. You know, I have a smartphone. Okay. Yeah. It, okay. You know, cell phones started off uh, uh, being voice driven, single channel, essentially. Yeah. I'm connecting it. Now I yeah. may have several hundred apps. Each of them is sucking data from all over the place. Servers yeah. connected all over the place. Okay. Yep. So, so somehow the demand is there, okay? Who yep. is responsible or is it is it important to think of, you know, how is that demand actually going to be met? Yeah, today it's being met by, you know, any way they want, right? No, no, it's actually uh, yeah. getting more frustrating. It's not being met is, is what I would say. Yeah, true, good point. Okay, because I mean, again, I, I think of AI as sort of really, mm -hmm. again, exacerbating that demand in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay, so that's one. Okay, the, the next one is when I look at the data that feeds AI. Okay, AI operations are fairly complex. That data is actually mm -hmm. used in many places, not just one. Okay. Yep. Again, do we have networks that are purpose built to actually do that, or are we trying to shoehorn it into something that exists today? Definitely shoehorning. Okay. Definitely. Okay. And so, so the question is, does that kind of shoehorning actually open up, I would say, the vulnerability space? For how we do it, because it looks like we're putting patches on patches to some extent. Mm -hmm. 
And we are because going back to your question about a, a, uh, the new architecture framework, right, and the new security framework and the new regulatory framework, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Martin, you had a question, you're on mute, if you did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this so, is Mark Ellis. I, I got a question. Yeah, uh, the one, well, not, well, yes, question only. But one of the things that I think the point that you brought up was uh, what does the AI element that is produced, who, do, who does it favor? How do we know that it is a, a good actor or not working for another entity right. or supplying information back? I think that's something that, that fits into our AI security framework. Um, and then the, the other one is you were talking about how the cloud providers, the other ones, are making most of the money in the the telcos or the other groups are and 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 that's that's free enterprise the telcos just have to work on their pricing <laughs> models but they have to keep it competitive because um take like in the us for instance we have 80 percent of the world's internet data and cloud data infrastructure inside the united states it's here because it's more cost effective to operate here uh but and make any changes in that and that can, can dramatically move that market to where it would be uh, where it would be actually more efficient to move that to closer to 80% of the world's population, such as in Singapore or other areas. So it's a real tight yeah. balancing act on that. But yeah. I do. But the yeah. idea of figuring out bad actors, po avoiding possible bad actors or um, in AI components, I think is, is something that's critical. Yeah, transparency. You know, to me, you know, delegated authority and transparency. Who is that AI acting on behalf of? And is there transparency on what they're optimizing for? Right? We're seeing, if you want to say the exhaust of that AI, right, in our feed, right, in our traffic, in, in everything, right? But we don't know what the underlying motive of that AI is. And that's what that's why my company and I are pushing the trustworthy AI framework and delegated authority so it's clear. Mm -hmm. it, you know, free enterprise, sure, right? Uh, but two things. One is we need a secure cr critical infrastructure. So okay. it can only be so free to where we're safe, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I can't just jump on a plane today, right? There's TSA for a reason, right? So some friction is important. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so Gautam on the delegation portion. Yeah, one I of need the to jump in. Yeah. So, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. On on the delegation yeah. issue, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, to what extent? Okay, uh, is AI sort of when when you we use AI, to what extent is it actually disaggregated across an ecosystem? So you are orchestrating. Okay, I would say the interest of multiple players within that ecosystem. Very good question. This is my opinion, right? So whenever we perform a function like we're here, right? Yeah. Uh, the you can say that we're disaggregating the outcome across several entities, but what is my motive, right? So coming back to that AI, the AI program is generally written by one entity. It's owned by one entity, right? So regulating that motive is not very difficult. Providing transparency is not difficult. It says AI doesn't have a framework to be transparent. Well, so so let me think of it this way. Within yeah. within the telco system, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have brokers of various kind, a bandwidth broker, a, a yeah. broker for all kinds of resources, right? Yeah. Okay, and to some extent, the broker is written for uh, what I would say is the uh, uh, is written, might be written by the telco. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the motives of the players using that okay allows everybody to tune it to what they're interested in. It's like an auction system in some sense. Okay. Yeah, Adam, just one nuance, though. I've worked in telco for 25 years, yeah. and I think it's more and more telcos are not actually writing any of those brokers. This is why the framework is so important, 
They're yeah. sourcing that broker from somebody else. Most so, of the so software, have, having worked for Telcordia and Belcor before that, we used to write them for for the telcos. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So Telcordia, you know, you understood the motives of stuff that Telcordia wrote. Right? Yeah. I don't understand the motive. What Ericsson is writing, what God forbid Huawei is writing, right? Yeah. And yeah. and it's not it's everyday performance is one dimension. Transparency saying I understand what possible anomalies or backdoors is introducing into a system for that one event. It may be designed for one event. No, no, the, the point is that many of these things interact with each other, and it is actually very hard to unscramble, even if you, yeah, you're tasked with it, okay, yeah. uh, as to yeah. what the unintended consequences are, okay. Or, or intended, you know. Anomalous yeah. consequences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 I mean, it's 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 a tough, tough, yeah. uh, tough, tough question. It is. Okay. I've, I've, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ga Gotham, probably we're close here. Yeah, we're we're sort of at the top of the hour, uh, and want to respect everybody's time. But I can tell you, this was extremely useful, extremely thought provoking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Apologies for asking so many questions. <laughs> I love this. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, but uh, no, this this was very useful for us. You know, I I suspect we'll be doing uh, there'll be a working group. We'll we'll continue to probably address this sometime next year. Uh, so I think uh, you know I, I hope we can actually have you back one way or another. <laughs> okay. I'd love to love to help. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Take care, Thank folks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Super. Okay. Martin, you're on mute. Martin, you're on mute. Ma Marty? You're still on mute. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, yeah, you had it for a moment there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Just coming on and off. There we yeah, go. There you go. Yeah, how do we access this deck? I, there's so much to read there that's so interesting, but I couldn't do it fast I, enough. I think we have a copy from Gautam, so we will be distributing that. Great, thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. Take care, Adam. Take care. Super. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.